One of the most unique features for the PSN series power supply is the ability to synchronize multiple manufacturers' strobes out of one cabinet. What you see here is a wall of strobes. There is Potter Gentex, Amseco, Wheelock, and System Sensor. By the end of this video, all those strobes will be synchronized using this PSN series power supply. The PSN series notification power supply comes in two sizes, either a 10 amp or a 6 amp. The 10 amp has six outputs, while the 6 amp has four outputs. Each panel also has one aux power circuit. All the outputs are each rated at 3 amps. Both panels can be wired Class A if necessary. Taking a look inside the cabinet, we will find several terminals for making connections, dip switches for programming, and LEDs for troubleshooting. We will cover all of these things in this video. There are two boards mounted on the inside of the power supply. The board on the left is the power source for the power supply. The board on the right is where you will make all your terminations as well as program the dip switches to set the output characteristics. Taking a closer look at the terminals, we will start on the left hand side of the power supply. There are two trouble relays, general trouble and AC loss. The general trouble relay will trigger when there is any trouble condition on the power supply. The AC loss relay will trigger when the panel loses its dedicated power source. You can also program a delay time for the AC loss relay to trigger the general trouble relay. Moving to the right, we find the battery charging terminals. The panel will charge up to two 55 amp hour batteries and the cabinet will hold two 18 amp hour batteries. Moving to the board on the right, we have several terminals for making your connections, dip switches for programming, and LED indicator lights for troubleshooting. Starting with the terminals on the far right hand side of the board, the two input triggers. Each NAC output can be programmed to follow one or both of the trigger inputs. That programming is done via the dip switches, which we will talk about later in this video. Input 1 and 2 can be connected to a Class B or Class A trigger circuit as seen here. Multiple power supplies can be triggered by the same circuit. Remember to install an N-Align resistor at the last power supply. Each NAC output circuit is individually selectable for Class A or B operation. This is done through the dip switch programming. Another thing to note about the two input triggers is that they have built-in trouble monitoring relays, which means that supervision of this power supply can be accomplished through the trigger inputs, and there is no need to monitor the dedicated trouble contact. Next, we move to the reference and align terminals. The PSN series power supply uses a standard 5.1K end-align resistor. In retrofit applications where a value other than 5.1K is in use, determine the value of that end-align resistor and install it on the reference end-align terminals. Any value between 2K and 27K can be used. All NAC wiring will then be supervised by this value. If no reference end-align is connected, 5.1K is assumed. In retrofit applications, this can save considerable installation time. The next set of terminals is the DC power aux power terminals. You have three amps of power that can be configured as continuous or door holder power. The DC power terminals are programmed through switch 8 found at the top of the board. On switch 8, set dip switch 6 to the on position for 24 volt door holder power or leave it in the off position for 24 volt constant power. Next we move to the NAC outputs. Each NAC output is configured by the dip switches on the right. The first three switches are used to select the trigger input or what will activate the notification circuit. You can also designate each notification circuit to follow the DC power so to be constant on or door holder power. You can also set the circuit to be always on or always off. The next three switches designate the output pattern for the notification circuit. Your option for each notification circuit is constant on, ANSI temporal output, pass through, Potter or Amseco sync, Gentex sync, system sensor sync, and Wheelock sync. As you can see here, these two notification circuits for NAC1 and NAC2 are set up to be triggered by input 1 and to be Gentex sync. Some things to consider when programming the PSN power supply notification outputs. Each circuit can be programmed individually, so you could have one circuit of MSECO, one circuit of Gentex, one circuit of Wheelock, and one circuit of system sensor, and all your strobes would synchronize. That's called quadrasync.
In addition to that, any of those circuits could be DC power circuits, which can be door holder or constant power. Taking a look at that QuadraSync in action, remember the wall of strobes from the beginning of this video? Now using QuadraSync technology, we will get them all to sync together. In order to see the synchronization, we've added a filter to the video. Each NAC circuit can also be programmed as pass-through mode. In retrofit applications where none of the built-in synchronization patterns are being used, the PSN power supply can be wired and programmed for pass-through mode, which allows the power supply to pass through the synchronization pattern that is being used as the trigger circuit. QuadraSync is not available when the panel is in pass-through mode. Each NAC output has an indicator LED located at the top of the board. The LED will flash quickly when there is a trouble condition such as an end align missing, end align shorted, or a current limit condition. When the NAC is active, the LED outputs the same pattern as the NAC output. So for example, when NAC1 is programmed as Gentech Sync, when the NAC is active, the LED of NAC1 flashes in a Gentech Sync pattern. When a NAC output is programmed for DC power, such as constant 24 volt, the LED indicator for that NAC output will be constant on as seen here. Another feature of the NAC LED is trouble memory. If a NAC goes into trouble, the LED of that NAC blinks quickly. When the trouble restores, if the trouble memory feature is enabled, the LED for that NAC will begin issuing the trouble memory flash, which indicates that a trouble existed previously but is no longer present. The trouble memory indication consists of two short flashes issued once per second as seen here. To enable trouble memory, simply set dip switch 8 of switch 8 to the on position. To clear or reset the trouble memory, set the trouble memory dip switch to the off position and then back on to enable the feature again. Switch 8 also allows the installer to select a class or style of wiring for the NAC outputs. For example, dip switch 1 of switch 8 sets the class or style of wiring for NAC 1 and 2. In the off position, NAC 1 and 2 will be class B. In the on position, it will be one class A circuit as seen here. Dip switch 2 of switch 8 sets the style of wiring for NAC 3 and 4. Dip switch 3 sets the style of wiring for NAC 5 and 6. Dip switch 4 and 5 are used to set the door holder AC dropout delay. When dip switch 4 and 5 are both in the off position, there is a 15 second delay before the panel drops power to the door holder circuit. You can select the delay to be 15 seconds, 60 seconds, 5 minutes, or keep the door holder circuit energized on a loss of AC. To recap, the PSN power supply comes in two sizes, a 10 amp with six notification circuits and a six amp with four notification circuits. The notification circuits are programmed via dip switches and can be programmed for QuadraSync if needed. There is a reference end line which can save considerable time when replacing an existing power supply. There is also a trouble memory LED for each NAC output that can also save time in troubleshooting the power supply. This feature-rich power supply provides plenty of versatility to save you time and money on your next installation. For more information, please visit our website, www.pottersignal.com.